Welcome back everyone to Nerdy Nekoma. Today we return to An Uncertain Future, my Bokaka Kuroken, Omega Versa You. I love it so much. We're in season two. This is part seven. I hope you all like it. Enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go. The blonde looked up confused. The voice sounded almost foreign to him. It was soft and quiet, almost meek and close to breaking. It didn't fit the A's standing in the doorframe at all. Confused, his eyes narrowed as he looked at the taller who unintentionally made an effort to look like a kick puppy. The Omega's frown deepened. This wasn't the Bokuto he knew. It had been forever since he saw him like this. Insecure. It wasn't like him. Cut at all. What? At the sound of his name, he looked up, exposing glossy eyes and tear stains covering his cheeks. Immediately, Kima's heart sank and he got up. Soft sniffles echoed through the room as Bokuto observed him, desperately trying to put his thoughts into a logical order. Without hesitation, and despite the overwhelming guilt flooding their bond, Kemma cupped his cheeks and pulled him down to his level to inspect his eyes for whatever could have caused his mate to drown in self-doubt. The usually clear and bright gold was clouded by heavy teardrops, and it broke his heart. Kataro, what happened? Come, sit down. He let one of his hands fall down to Bokuto's and gently tucked him toward the bat. The ace led him. He ought to apologize for his careless words, but the touch of his mate felt too good. It coaxed more tears and made his throat tighten. Kemma climbed into his lap, stretching until he towered over the alpha to press a tender kiss first to his hair, then forehead and then nose before resting his forehead against Bokuto's and gripping the ace's shoulders firmly to ground him. He wasn't sure if, at the current time, he'd be able to control his scent to calm him and settle for letting the unspoken be heard through their marks. He always struggled to verbalize what he thought and felt in a way that others understood. But Bokuto was quick to misunderstand and more often than not assumed rejection where there was none. As confusing as it was in the beginning, they learned to trust by laying bare the hidden in a way only they could share. It was a moment that drowned out all around and left room for only them. Just them. The truest, most honest selves. Vulnerable and fragile, yet pure and unshakable. Slowly their breathing and even heartbeats seemed to fall into one joint rhythm as the storm inside settled, leaving the land desolated and bare, raw to the touch, one that could be either healing or destructive. Ko, what happened? He desperately wished they'd be able to share their thoughts through the bond as well, just for situations like these. He was fairly certain that'd be horrible for him for the most part, but right now, he despised the words they had to say to resolve this, almost wishing they could stay unspoken. Something was wrong and he'd rather it resolve itself. He didn't want Bogota to feel insecure, and if the ace was here, then because it was about him. If it was him, Tetsun Kichi might not be able to alleviate the Alpha's worries. He might be the one who, for some reason, could do it best right now. Just. That Kemma wasn't at all good at this. I'm sorry. Kemma sighed. Then a small smile cracked through the facade. I told you before, if you don't tell me, I have no idea what you're even apologizing for. You can't just say that without explaining. 
His attempts to lighten the mood failed miserably as Bogota avoided eye contact. I'm sorry for what I said. You were afraid and stressed out already and I only added to that. Cordo explained everything. Suddenly, the strong arms of his alpha wrapped around his, in comparison, small frame and bulked his face against the nape of his neck. His words were muffled against his skin. I'm sorry. I, I don't think like that. I swear I don't. I love you, Kenma. I, I would never be mad at you for, for... What are you talking about? Your dream. Kamma gulped as realization flashed over his face. His throat tightened and he slowly lifted his arms to reciprocate the hug. I know. I know you wouldn't. But I would still feel guilty. I want to be enough. I decided to do this now. I, I have to be strong enough. Every word felt more like lead on his tongue. You are strong. Kenma, you are so strong. And if anything ever happens, which it won't, it wouldn't be your fault. You're doing your best. That's all we can ask of you. Kemma nodded slowly. His voice had been taken by the lump in his throat and he barely managed to force out a thanks. With deep breaths, he tried to stabilize himself and when he pulled back, he smiled. His eyes were filled with tears, but he smiled at the alpha before leaning in to kiss him. He carefully, with shaking hands, took Bogotos and guided it to his stomach. After almost four months, it wasn't completely flat anymore. A slight bump, just big enough to be noticeable, shaped his lower belly and Bogota gasped as he felt it. I will do my best. For them. And us. Kamal looked away, his cheeks reddened at his own declaration. He practically melted under Bogota's gentle touch more delicate than typical for the strong spiker as he traced the outline of the bum. Underneath the skin and tissue grew that baby. It was unfathomable, too much to truly comprehend, yet Kemma felt it instinctively. And suddenly, without any prior warnings, the tears fell and he full on sobbed. Bogota's movements faltered and his attention snapped back to his mate immediately. Confused, he watched as Kemma's face shifted from perplexity to pouting to an angry glare directed at him. This is your fault. Oh, Kuros, I hate you, stupid alphas. He grumbled, but there was no real heat behind his words. It took a moment before the alpha understood, laughed and buried him into his arms again. If it makes you feel better, I'm so happy I feel like crying even without being messed with my hormones. The A said it a little too loud for Kemma's taste right next to his ear. But aside from a half-hearted slap, Kemma didn't protest as he held him tighter. He chuckled wetly through the tears and simply allowed the comfort of his mate to calm him. As soon as I figure out whose fault this was, I'll cut your balls off. He said it jokingly. Half jokingly. Bogota stiffened in his arms and silently urged Kuro to run. Downstairs, Kuro tried in vain to calm Akashi, who for some reason decided that now was the time to go on an almost manic cleaning spree. Keiji, darling, what are you doing? He gently held the Omega by his shoulders in the midst of reorganizing their living room. Cleaning. There's so much stuff laying around. It can't stay like this when the baby gets here. He sneakily escaped Kuro's grip and continued loading Brooks into his arms. 
which won't be for another five months. So, why exactly the sudden change of pace? Akashi gave him an exasperated sigh while continuing the task at hand. I'm sorry, Kemba's mood swings put me into a frenzy. Does not affect you at all. His brows furrowed while his hand automatically found its way to his neck, where the bond marks were hidden underneath the turtleneck he was wearing today. I mean, sure, of course they do. Not much more than usual, though. Even though they are, of course, a lot more volatile recently. He watched him closely. Maybe it affects you more because you are an Omega? Omegas in a pack tend to be very sensitive to what's changes with others, right? Akashi hummed, dividing his attention between actually listening and resorting the books. Kuro's eye, trying his best to contain the smile creeping up on his face at the endearing and familiar side. Akashi always tended to organize things when stressed. It helped him relax and sort out the chaos in his mind. Let's just hope you don't get pseudocyesis. You know, phantom pregnancy. The book in his hand dropped and he looked at Kuro incredulously. That happens to dogs. He looked at him as I'm saying, do I look like an effing dog to you? And humans, not as frequently, and it is more common in omegas, especially those with a bigger pack and a fellow pregnant omega mate. And you check two of these three marks. With how much you researched, I for sure would have thought you read about it before. Akashi shook his head slowly, still watching him in mild horror at the news. Kuro was quick to reassure him. Don't worry. It's rare and it'll pass. You most likely don't have it. If at all, it shows how much you sympathize with Kemma. Or how much I want to be in his shoes. He sounded defeated, leaving Kuro a little helpless. He sighed. Don't worry, I have no doubt about the situation or anything, just intrusive thoughts. If my body wants this so bad, what if I do care in the end and I'm just in denial? What if I would be mad that the baby isn't mine and reject it? I know I won't, it's just stupid thoughts. He picked up the book again, already intending to simply end the conversation before it could escalate, when suddenly Kuro's arms were wrapped around him. I'm happy that you told me. Akashi sighed again, but this time his lips curled up into a smile. I'll always tell you, just like I promised. The next days went relatively normal, until... Kemma, what's going on? You seem stressed. That was perhaps an understatement. Kemma was pale and looked like he was about to throw up. Maybe it was the morning sickness, though that had gotten better a lot throughout the past week, and he wouldn't be here in the living room if that was the case. His eyes found Kuros, who looked at him concerned, while the steps behind them were a clear indicator that Bokuto and Akashi noticed that something was wrong as well. Within seconds, they had assembled in the living room and scanned the Omega for any reason behind his distress. Before someone could approach him to offer comfort, he spoke up. My mom called. She's coming to visit. Stunned silence was replaced by laughter as Bokuto took in the situation. Kuro chuckled as well and Akashi didn't look far from it. He put an arm around him in a conciliatory gesture and wrapped over his arm to soothe the tension within. Hey, it's gonna be okay. Your mom always knows how to handle things. Yeah, she always knows too much. Camera ground. 
Don't scare me like that, kitten. I thought we had a serious problem. This is a serious problem. Kemma let himself slump against Akashi. She'll know the moment she walks in. Kuro smiled. Your scent is not that strong yet. Kemma raised an eyebrow in disbelief, as if that could stop his mom from knowing immediately. He swore that woman was a witch, in a good way, somewhat. And even if, isn't that a good thing? He walked up to him, but Kemma developed a sudden interest in the wooden patterns of the floorboards. She's been through that before, and she's a bit like you, so maybe it'll help. Talking to her, I mean. Kemma sighed and put his full weight onto Akashi. A chuckle resonated in the dark-haired's chest. He gently closed his arms around the small and breathed in deeply. The scent of petrichor and lion filled his senses. It was calming, an undeniable proof of the life growing inside him. He rested his chin on Kemma's head. It's gonna be okay. Kemma groaned again, but allowed the calm radiating from his neck to take over his thinking. This was going to be interesting. When does she get here? I can't wait to see Kozumi-san again. Okuto grinned and leaned over the back of the couch. Kemma couldn't help but smile. With her immediate acceptance, his mom earned a lot of sympathy points with the others, and if he was honest, she was simply amazing. It was true that her help would be, well, helpful, but telling her felt like speaking it into reality. It would be the same as when he saw the ultrasound, an undeniable reality. In four days. He knew that this wouldn't go away. He didn't want it to, yet this still felt overwhelming. Telling his mom, her knowing felt overwhelming. As if reading his thoughts, Akashi pulled him closer. We will be with you the whole time. You don't have to do this alone. He whispered the words next to his ear and resumed the soft padding of his arms. And if you want, I'm pretty sure she'll help you to hunt down the responsible alphas. He said it in the same calm tone, causing shivers to ripple through set Alpha's bodies. Kuro and Bokuto exchanged a quick, worried glance and gulped. Truth was, both their Omegas and Kemma's mother were forces to be reckoned with. Kemma laughed at their shocked expressions. It brightened the room and filled the air with the light scents of petrichor, laced with lime and cotton, and even underlying tones of a milky scent. Their hearts fastened at the sight. Seeing Kemma laugh so openly was rare and one of the most beautiful things in the world. Thank you so, so much for watching to the end. It means the world to me and it helps me out a lot. Just like it would if you left a like in case you did like this story and if you subscribe so you won't miss out on anything in the future like the next part of it also tell me what your favorite moment and or line of this video was so that i can learn how to make better content for you and the content you want to see it means the world to me any request by the way if you have one you can put in the request form it's linked in the video description a special thanks as always goes out to my nanny because thank you so much thank you strange for joining it means the world to me if you watching right now are not in an echo yet consider joining it has nice perks like getting videos early like this one and more stuff like that also check out my reaction channel it is linked right here in the end cut as long with other content i heard it's supposed to be good i don't know maybe check it out make an opinion for yourself and now have one fun amazing day bye everybody just do your thing wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up